My name is Pastor Patronelle Wright, uh, and I am a resident of Seattle, Washington. The Total Experience Gospel Choir began in 1973. I had been hired by the Seattle Public School District to start a gospel choir at Franklin High School. This is a break off of that choir that was started back in 1873 at Franklin High School. After we had gotten everything together and had been singing even there, we had a gospel choir class for a little over a year, one of the persons who worked for Franklin High School prevailed upon the city to get rid of the gospel choir because there was no place for gospel music in a public school. So consequently, a year later after I'd finished my third year, I was called into the office and asked that, and told that I had to leave because there were complaints from the community, which was a big lie because the community loved it that their kids were in the gospel choir in that school. And consequently, the one counselor who perpetrated this situation um, later just they fired her anyway. And I took the choir from Franklin High School to Mount Zion Baptist Church, which was where I was going at that time. And the story is history from that point. I didn't want anything to be partial, meaning that if I was going to do this choir, and I told this to the principal when we first started, I said it's going to be a total project. I'm going to give them the whole gamut of gospel music, starting with the old songs from the cotton field up to the present day, modern day gospel. And he, Mr. Hannah Walt was very perceptive and he said to me, whatever you do, go ahead and do it. I'm glad I've been asked about how do we support ourselves. We certainly did not get the cooperation from the community. A lot of the churches were upset because once we brought it to the community, a lot of the young people who did not sing in their church choirs flocked to the Total Experience Gospel Choir. And so we had to financially support ourselves in the way we could. And the best way I knew to do that was chicken dinners. <laughs> we probably would have been edged right out of existence. But up until this day, I still live in the same home and those fried chicken dinners brought us through our financial crisis. <laughs> That would have been awesome if I had had a team of people to support us. We had some parents at first, but they were coached away. Kids didn't want to get out of the choir, but it was so much pressure put on some of the parents that they took their kids out of the choir. And at that point, especially when we were asked to leave Franklin High School, I just took it to my church, which was Mount Zion Baptist Church at that time. And once I took it to Mount Zion Baptist Church and opened it up to the community, we ended up with 300 kids in that choir. I cried myself to sleep many nights. And then after a while, I said, I'm through crying. I'm gonna show y'all. And when I say, I'm gonna show y'all, and I'm not going, I'm going to show you all about what it's about. I'm gonna show y'all. And I did went full step ahead after they asked me to leave Franklin High School because of the static from one of the counselors there. And Mount Zion allowed me to come into Mount Zion Baptist Church. Kids came from all over the place, and then I they had no idea that this would be a problem. The pastors of some of the churches forbade their kids to join the Total Experience Choir. They really wanted to be in it. They heard the choir sing, and they were all young kids just like them. But uh, many of them forbade their choir members to, members of the church to be in the Total Experience. But those who did not let their kids come and go, and what really shocked everybody is that we just didn't sing in churches in Seattle. I took them on their first bus ride. They had not been on a bus ride before, down to Los Angeles, California, straight to Disneyland. And my, oh my, oh my, I knew the Total Experience Gospel Choir was a hit among the kids, and they would be persuading their parents, I gotta get in that choir, I gotta get in that choir. And that's exactly what happened. My name is Tia Young. I'm the granddaughter of Gertrude and James Young. And I was in the choir when I was 16 and, and then came back on the 40th anniversary and I currently sing in the choir with Pastor Pat Wright. What brought me back to the choir 
is um, it was always in my heart from when I was 16. So it was just something that was always in my heart. Um, the experience just stayed with me. I would see Pastor Pat on TV and at different events, and it was just one of those, it, I would get a warm feeling and, and say, gosh, I wish I could go back. And then an opportunity came up when they had the 40th anniversary, and Gina, who's been in the choir forever, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to come back uh, as one of the alumni, and that's, the rest is history. Once I started that gospel choir, I had 103 choir members to start with. We, and it was just too many kids for the size of the room that we were in. And so we had to break it down to a much smaller group of about 45. And it broke my heart because I had to pick kids that could be in it and those who could not. However, um, as I prayed and prayed and prayed about it to God, He, he gave me what I should do. Just leave it alone. They created the problem, let them fix it. I'm Shannon Jones. I used to direct the choir. Um, I still come back and direct the choir. I um, come back and sing during when they have their anniversaries, and I'm looking forward to the 45th anniversary. When I got into the choir, I went on the very first tour to California. And to get on the bus, three buses, that many kids, away from my mom, um, I'm thinking I'm about to go out and have fun or a whole different life. And I went down there and had the time of my life in gospel. Oh my goodness. When all these kids, all 103 of them got together, they raised the roof. <laughs> they raised the roof. I go back to my birthplace, which is Carthage, Texas. My mother was a school teacher. My father was the pastor of the church. And they always told us that we could do anything we wanted to do in life if we put forth the effort. I'm Robert Stevens Jr., the eldest son of Robert and Gertrude Stevens. Um, I'm the first male chaperone of the choir. I can say that she brought that spirit to this community. And when I say this community, uh, we always say the central area but it's actually the black community, uh, which all of us don't live in Central Yard, but that's still our focal point. She did it through the radio, but that really didn't get it out there. When the Lord gave her the blessing to have a total experience of life, that's when the atomic bomb is. I would like to be remembered in this community as number one, a person who was loyal despite what anybody thought or said. I didn't let anybody deter me from doing what I felt was right within my heart to do. And that was family, friends, or strangers. And I was gifted musically. So I used all the tools they gave me. If anything, the Tell Experience Choir has taught me how to love without prejudice anybody that I see that needs to be loved. It doesn't make any difference to me if they're red, brown, yellow, black, or white, but exercise love toward that person and be the example that you want them to try and become, number one, yourself.